Okay, so I'm not the person at the 210 slot, I'm the person at the 220 slot, and I'm Felipe from Unicraft, I'm the CEO at uh, Unicraft, we do lightweight virtualization, and today I want to tell you a little bit about how we think that the cloud should be running in millisecond uh, timeframes instead of uh, seconds or minutes. Okay, so to get started, the cloud is great, but it's uh, very, very inefficient. And so if you want to deploy an app uh, to the cloud, um, that's pretty easy to do, uh, but the traffic to the app is often intermittent. Um, and so basically what happens is, I'm doing a little update first, there we go. Um, first you deploy the, the app and it's idle, and then that's money that you're paying your cloud provider and your app is doing nothing. Uh, then it becomes active, that's okay, you're making money, uh, and then it goes idle and then sort of the cycle repeats in what I call the house always wins. This is your, uh, I hope there's no Amazon or so, such people in this room that are going to tackle me and kill me after this. But um, so anyways, um, you say, oh, I know, I can enable something called scale to zero, right? So the problem with scale to zero, well, there's two problems. One is detecting when your application is idle takes sometimes a long time, depending on the provider, sometimes even minutes. And then when uh, you're actually detecting activity, it takes a, a while to sort of ramp your application back up, right? So the principle looks great. It's off, you're idle, you're spending nothing. Uh, it, the request comes on, it's active, it's doing useful work, you're paying, but that's okay. And then the cycle repeats. Um, the sort of practice is very different. Um, first, you're kind of idle and the system hasn't detected it, you're paying, that's not good. Eventually it goes off, that's fine. Then you need to wake up again, but it's not quite up. You get a little cold start, and then eventually the cycle repeats, right? So you're overspending again. Um, but then you say, okay, I actually, my, my app always has, my service always has traffic going to it, so this isn't a problem. But traffic is also bursty, right? So you say, I have auto scale for that. And the problem with auto scale is that traffic fluctuates in milliseconds, and most auto scale mechanisms actually take minutes to ramp up, right? So you have a bunch of different workarounds. Uh, one is called schedule auto scaling, where you assume traffic is regular and you know when it's going to happen. That's unlikely to always be the case. The second one is you're assuming traffic is predictable and you have some clever algorithms to, okay, the traffic is not regular, but I know when it's going to spike up, right? Uh, that's also a big ask. Or the other one is the most common one we always do is we just over provision, right? We just have a bunch of machines and so be it, it works, it, it's costly, but what are you going to do? So, uh, you know, hyperscalers are happy. Again. Okay, but you say, oh, but I can have millisecond auto scale if I go too fast or Lambda or one of these services. And that's true, but then you hit other snags like cold starts, right? Uh, and a cold start basically is your application wakes up really quickly, but from time to time, it's going to take a second or two seconds or whatever it might be. You don't control that, uh, and your users are not very happy with you when that happens, right? And that costs you money because user experience matters. Um, there's a few workarounds here as well. You can keep your applications warm all the time. That costs more money, right? Um, or you have things like CPU boost by some providers so that the cold start is faster. It costs more money, right? So you can sort of sense the pattern here. Um, and so the question is, where are all these issues coming from? Because I, we cannot imagine that this, these are all by design, right? And so if we go to the cloud stack and we look at the principles of it, you have a bare metal server at the bottom and you have a hypervisor like KVM for multi-tenancy and strong isolation purposes, right? And then normally all you care about is your app. This would be the ideal stack. The reality, though, looks much more like this. You have that virtual machine, and then you have to have an OS, right? And the OS is typically something like Linux. So you have now an OS kernel space divided for isolation, except you don't need it because you already have the hypervisor for isolation, but okay, that's fine. Now you're going to put a container runtime in there for isolation, but you don't need it because you already have the user's kernel space divide isolating you from the hypervisor who's isolating you already, but fine, that's fine, you do that. And then you have a bunch of libraries and packages that maybe your application needs, maybe it doesn't. Now you're having maybe language label isolation primitives on top of that and your little app at the very top. And the difference between the previous scheme and this one is all overhead. Not to mention that controllers sort of uh, pollute this uh, whole thing even further by making things even slower, right? 
So it looks like a bit like this, right? You have your app and it's kind of lean and you control it, but under you and totally out of your control, you have this massive cloud stack. So are these issues fundamental, right? They're not really, right? And if you could go back to first principles and you had the hypervisor and the app, what you would want is to have a very, very thin layer uh, of, for the virtual machine such that the app can actually work. And that specialized virtual machine, the technical term for it is a unikernel. And of course, you'd have to make sure that the controllers and load balancers are lean, but that's for another day. So unikernel, very simply, uh, if you have the app and you can break down libraries and OS kernel libraries and so forth into components, the ideal case is you could pick those bits of software that make your application actually run and dump the rest. So at build time, if you could sort of magically create a custom OS and distro for each application, that would be great and that would be a unikernel. Um, this is a lightning talk, so I'm not going to dive a whole lot into this. What we use is something called Unicraft, which is an open source uh, Linux Foundation project at unicraft.org that we started five, six years ago. And it, its aim is to make it simple to build these unikernels. So just a little taste of it. If you do this, you can have on a single server. This is a stress test, obviously about 90,000 Nginx virtual machines on that single server running. Um, Unicraft Cloud is, we built a cloud platform based on these um, unikernels, but the point of the platform more than unikernels is the fact that it can run with millisecond semantics. So it's pretty simple. I'll show you it in a moment. I'll attempt a live demo or Wi-Fi. We'll see how it goes. Um, you install a one-liner uh, craft CLI open source tool, and then you just sort of run it. So I'll show you that in a moment. And it's based on Docker files. Okay. So let's um, give that a try. OK, so as I said, I already have a craft tool in here. I have a, um, a GitHub directory with a bunch of examples for directories for different applications and languages, each with a Docker file. Um, what I'll do is I'll just deploy one of those. Uh, here I'm in the Nginx uh, one. And when I hit this, the system is just going to build this Nginx unikernel uh, put it into an OCI standard image, deploy it to the platform. The platform picks it up and it just deploys it. Uh, the build time in this case took about just a few seconds, a couple of ones, and then it cold booted uh, the server in about 26 seconds. Uh, milliseconds, sorry. <laughs> um, what the platform also noticed is that there's no server going to, there's no traffic going to the web server, right? So what it did up here is it put it on standby. So this is automatically scaled to zero. But what's kind of nice is I can click on the URL that was provided to me and immediately Nginx responds, right? And if I do it from the console with curl and you keep an eye out up here on the standby, maybe you should be able to catch it coming on for a moment and then back down, right? Um, and it'll just immediately respond. So I, as the user, think things are on all the time. On the back end, obviously, they're off. And when they're off, they're consuming no CPU and memory resources, right? And then um, on a different account, what I have, just to show scalability, these are 1,000 instances of Next.js. So two things, there are a lot more. And also Next.js is what's called a heavy app. Normally it takes um, seconds or, or longer to actually start up. Um, I'm not going to go into it. We have snapshotting and other mechanisms to make sure the application, even if it's heavy, starts quickly. But uh, to show you that this is actually working, uh, what I have here is a script that's going to go and ping five of each of these at a time. So you see them waking up and going back to sleep. And I'll also, also measure how long it's taking them to reply with something called HTTP stat. So there it's going. Um, you can see five at a time coming on, replying, and going back to sleep. Um, processing time, including Next.js processing time, is in the order of 60, 70 milliseconds. The actual wake up time for each of these is in the order of seven, eight milliseconds or so. Okay, so just to uh, wrap it up, that was the demo. Um, you can even scale it further. This is a screenshot of 10,000 of these things uh, running on a single server. Um, if you are interested, it's free to use, so you can go to Unicraft Cloud slash sign up um, and, and give it a go. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me here, email or LinkedIn. Thanks a lot. <laughs>